morning boys and girls welcome to our chat to our lesson rather today welcome 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 to everyone joining us this morning um i am going to be presenting to you guys our english first additional language class for grade 10 brought to you by sam sam lockdown digital school like i said before i will be teaching you guys grade 10 english first additional language we will be doing writing and presenting a letter to the press. I am your presenter, Ms. P. N. Langa. Um, and like I said before, I will be teaching you guys English. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope we are all ready today. I know that I am ready. Um, a learner just mentioned now that they do not have a link to the e-school. Um, if you would like links to the e-school, please make sure that you go to our website, which is www.africanteengeeks, and that's where you should be able to access all of our links for the lesson. Um, so just by a yes or a no, I would just like to know who is ready for today's lesson. Travolin is ready, Stella is ready, um, Zalne is ready. Uh, yesterday we had a lot of learners missing. I'm sure it was because of the links, but like I explained to you guys just now that you can access all of our links through our website, which is African Teen Geeks. So welcome, welcome everyone. Today, we'll be looking at a new topic. Um, our topic is the letter to the press. Um, we are going to be writing a letter today. Thank you so much, Luceti. We'll be writing a letter today. But before we get into our letter to the press, um, I have to say that we have no shout outs today. Yesterday, we did a bit of cartoons um, and I gave you a task based on cartoons. I didn't get any emails yesterday, which I must say was very disappointing, but no worries because today I know that you guys will send me as many emails as you can. So just to quickly recap, if um, Kamkhala says she can't hear me. Kamkhala, please make sure that your connection is stable. Make sure that your volume is up. Um, if any other learners have issues with me um, and they can't hear me properly, please let me know immediately in the group. If you can't hear me, please let me know. If you can hear me, um, just let me know that you can hear me because I don't want to move on if learners can't hear. Okay, Lissetti can hear me. That's great. Um, and Musa can hear me. I think that's awesome. So let's move on to today's lesson. Um, like I said, before we move on to today's lesson, I just quickly want to recap on yesterday's lesson. Yesterday, we did some cartoons and we learned that a cartoon is usually a humorous drawn picture of a situation, a well-known personality or a story. Cartoons are used to express ideas or to draw attention to a situation. Hi, Vicky, you just got here. Um, and lastly, they, are, they often highlight a current or social or political issue. Everyone who was here yesterday, I believe, thoroughly enjoyed the lesson. Um, and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson as well. Um, so, like I explained before, today we are doing a letter to the editor. And by the end of the lesson, you will know the purpose of a letter to the editor. Um, you will know how to plan, draft, and write a letter to the press. Um, you will know the format of a letter to the press. And um, you will know the language used to the letter, um, of, uh, letter to the press. And I hope everyone is ready. And if everyone is ready, let's get right into it. Right, what is a letter to the press? Um, let's first unpack what the press is. The press is a type of publication. It comes in the form of newspapers. It comes in the form of magazines. Now you get online publications where you can read certain online 
content, content um, and basically a letter to the press is usually a response to this online content or publication. So I found for you guys a few hilarious examples of headlines, right? Um, Kamakhalo says she still can't hear me. Kamakhalo, try um, re-entering the, the group chat um, and try re-entering the Zoom session because I think everyone can hear me. Right, so I found very hilarious uh, um, headlines and the first one is wedding food goes <laughs> missing. Um, the second one is evil monkey stole my pet goes. And guys, these are all real newspaper headlines. Um, more, we have, I like Digoloshi food. When I saw this headline, I was like, well, how does Digoloshi food even taste like? Um, and the last one I found, um, just to turn down things a bit, was the spear has fallen, which is Winnie Mandela when she passed away, sadly, um, in 2018. So um, the press, like I mentioned earlier, is publication where newspapers and magazine and online publication publicizes certain news to the public, right? Now to get a bit more serious about what a letter to the press is, a letter to the press um, is a letter sent to a publication about issues of concern from readers. So like, for example, let's quickly go back to this headline. I like Tigoloshi food. Um, I personally don't know how Tigoloshi food looks like. I don't know how it tastes like. So I would write a letter to the press to express my concerns about how much I don't understand where this type of headline would be headed towards. You're right, Nelly, these headlines are bizarre. Okay, Trevolan says he can't see anything. Who else can't see anything? I don't want to move on if people are going to be left behind. It's a white page. Okay, so they can see something. Um, Trevolan, please try to re-enter the Zoom session if the problem persists. Right, so they say here, usually letters are intended for publication. In many publications, letters to the editor may be sent either through conventional mail or electronic mail. So like every other type of letter, you can send through the traditional mail where you write down your letter on a piece of paper, you fold it up and you take it to the post office, or you can write an email to the specific publication to express your views um, on the letter um, expressed. Um, Kalo, I think it's in Kalo. Um, sorry, I'm very, very sorry. We have a time limit on the lesson. So I do advise learners to take screenshots of every slide so that at the end of the lesson, you are able to consolidate all of your notes properly. So hello, if you can try to take a screenshot of each slide so that you're not left behind, that would be great. Okay, so a letter to the press, um, you have written formal letters before, right? We've all written formal letters before, um, and we all know that the format of a formal letter is very, very important. But Content tone language usage is far more important. So usually what we focus on is getting the format right, knowing where the address goes, etc. But what is also very important is what you write about in the letter, how the letter sounds, and what type of language usage is important. Usually when we write a letter to the press, we use very formal language, right? So and I will explain to you guys what formal language is exactly okay and the following is also very important when you're writing a letter to the press your style of writing is important you need to know what to avoid and the structure of the letter is highly highly important let's first talk about the style of the letter okay formal letters must be written in direct simple english so even though we all like using big words 
right? It's very, very important that if you want people to understand you, you would use language that would be easy for them to understand. So the writer must keep in mind that the intended audience should understand what is communicated for the result or response to be positive. So if you write a letter that people can't understand, it's going to be very, very hard for them to respond to your letter. So your letters should be clear. Your letters should be straightforward. The recipient must not be left wondering what you are trying to communicate. So if you write a very confusing letter, um, the next person is not going to understand exactly what you are saying. So you must always make sure that you use very easy language um, that the writer can easily respond to. Your letter must be concise and to the point. Concise meaning it must be nice and short, to the point. It's very, very nice to tell all types of stories in letter, but we don't advise you to tell stories in a formal letter to the press because you're trying to get a specific message across. Um, so it must be straight to the point. Your letter must be logical and make sense at all times. Right. Do we all understand so far? Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so it seems no one really has questions. We all understand so far what a letter to the press is. So let's come to this very, very big part. Uh, so the issues to avoid when you are writing a letter to the press is slang and colloquial language. Colloquial means informal language. So uh, words like cuz, bra, what's up? chill yo we avoid using because in a letter to the press you need to ensure that your language is very clean and very formal right so we don't use bra what's up you're not talking to your friend you are talking to an editor you are talking to someone from a press uh, publication so you can't use um bizarre crazy language right um, we are not allowed to use contractions. You don't use contractions. You don't use abbreviations. You don't use acronyms. Lion heart afternoon welcome. So words like don't, won't, can't, doesn't, and wouldn't are called contractions. And we don't use, we do not use those words. Who can give me an example of an abbreviation? Who can give me an example of an abbreviation? If and B, yes. Okay, people are asking, why can we not use contractions? Contractions are viewed as very, very, very informal pieces of writing. Um, contractions are like two words cut off and stuck together. So that makes your letter sound very, very informal. So we don't use don't. But this is saying that if we don't use abbreviation, word counts would be longer. No. Word count, remember, is per word. Okay. So um, if you use do not instead of don't, you just have one extra word that you'd be using, Palesa. And in this sense, remember, we are writing a formal letter. So the language that we're supposed to be using is very formal, clean, cut land language. A lot of people are giving me very nice abbreviations and acronyms, F and B, A and C, E, F, F, um, UNISA, um, Zelne says she uses abbreviations most of the time. I know it's normal to want to use an abbreviation most of the time, but not everyone would know what that abbreviation stands for. And I like the more responses that I'm getting, like your UNICEF, your DNA, your ANC. Um, Lissetti, yes, you can use slang when you are quoting someone, but remember that when you are quoting someone, you must use quotation marks. COVID, mm, okay, I'm a little in between, Palisa. 
about COVID, I think it would be appropriate to use COVID now because that's the term that is recurring in most publications. So I don't think it would be that much of a problem. Um, using numbers as well, Kamkhelo, you're right. We don't use numbers. We write out the number as the full word unless it's a very big number. You write line hot. We don't use ASAP. We use as soon as possible. And we don't use LOL. We use laughing out loud. See, Lionheart, I don't even know what AFK stands for. So if you had to write a, a letter to me, I wouldn't know what AFK stands for. And I really like this one. Uh, 18. That's a smart one, Valone. Um, and uh, we don't use that type of language there. Oh, Lionheart, away from keyboard. That's interesting. Right, let's move on, guys. The last thing we never, ever use in the letter to the press are substantiated accusations. So threats that cannot be carried out in emotional language, sarcasm, cliches, etc. So an unsubstantiated accusation is if you say your newspaper articles suck. That is considered very, very rude. Or if you say something along the lines of, I will burn all your newspapers. That is a threat. That is something we never ever write in um, letters to the press. Yes, Tyrese, you're right. It's very, very mean to give threats in a uh, formal letter to the press. We don't give any threats. And you don't use any emotional language like, I am angry. Um, I was very upset. There are better words to use than saying you're angry. Yes, Lionheart, you can't blackmail or threat people, um, threaten people. That is very bad. Yes, Zilne, the person might have worked very hard to write this article, so you can't just be mean to them. Yes, Stella, so there is a way to write um, personal feelings about a letter, uh, about an article that you've seen in the newspaper that you don't like in a very polite way. It would make the press very angry also. It is considered very rude because um, it is not very formal. So I would stay away from using very angry language. How do you threaten someone in a respectful way? Let's say you would say something along the line of, I am highly disappointed by the article I read in your newspaper. So you would say that I am highly disappointed. Um, I am very, um, um, offended by what I read, um, Tiro, you would use words like offended, you would use words like disappointed, you would use words like um, your article could have a negative effect on community members. So those types of words and phrases are more acceptable than using emotional words. Okay. Mali, you late. Welcome. Better late than never. Right. Let's move on to the next slide. So let's talk about the structure of a letter to the press. There are many, many, many structures of formal letters, right? And a letter to the press, you will notice just now, has a very peculiar structure, right? It's not like all the other formal letters you have written before. So a letter to the press still has two addresses because remember, it's a formal letter. So it has two addresses. It still has a formal salutation. So you still use dear sir or dear Miss Langa, etc. You use a title or subject line. Like in a formal letter, you would have a subject line. This line is a summary of the letter and is usually underlined. All letters should have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. The language or register must be formal and the conclusion must also be formal. So you must use yours faithfully, followed by the right, your surname or your name and initials. Does any, everyone get what the structure should have? Great. 
Okay, let's look closely into the structure. Okay, this is an example of a letter to the editor. If you look at this letter carefully, remember I told you a formal letter has two addresses. A normal formal letter has two addresses at the top of the letter. But with this type of formal letter, we have two addresses, one at the top left hand corner and one at the bottom left hand corner. I know you guys might have not seen the structure before. It's completely new because this is the structure that we follow when we are writing a letter to the press. Who has seen the structure for the very first time? A lot of you guys are saying they've only seen the structure for a very first time. Great, Lionheart, you've done this before at school, so you're ahead. With the others, I will make sure that by the end of the lesson, you understand why the structure is different from our normal formal letter. Lucidi, I will try to play cahoots with you guys next week. So, um... Give me a chance. I will set up um, a cahoot for you. So I'm going to give you guys about two seconds just to quickly browse through the structure. Right. Let's now look at the structure more carefully. I know, Therese, the details at the bottom are new to you. They are new to most learners. Carolina is asking, why is the address on the right-hand side? Um, why is the address on the right-hand side and on the left? Um, we, in a, an informal letter, and in a formal letter to the press, we have two addresses, right? We have an address at the top left-hand corner, and we have an address at the bottom left-hand corner, right? So it's very, very different from our normal formal letter. I will explain explain to you just now, Zulne, why you have to include a signature. Right. So let's look at this address thing a bit more closely, right? And you must have two addresses, okay? Like I, I explained to you before. You must have the recipient's address at the top left hand corner. So the person you are writing a letter to. Let's look at the address for now. We will talk about the each paragraph just now. The top left hand corner has the address of the, um, of the person you are sending the letter to. Right? And the second address, okay, is at the bottom left hand corner. And with this address, this is now your address. This is the writer's address. You understand? So not all formal letters follow the structure. The recipient's address is at the top left-hand corner. And the writer's address, your address, is at the bottom left-hand corner. Yes. This is only for the letter to the press. Um, the city is asking how many different types of letters are there? We have three different types, okay? We have a friendly letter. We have a formal letter with two addresses at the top. Then we have a formal letter to the press, which has one address at the top and one address at the bottom, which is what we're doing today. Okay. And always make sure that at the end of your address, you have the date. So we always put a date after your address. Right. Let's look at what these um, addresses really pertain. Let's look at the recipient's address. So if you had to write a letter, for example, to the Daily Sun newspaper, how would your address format stand or be arranged. You would first have the editor, the person you are writing to, the name of the publication, 
and the example we have there is daily sun you would have the building number and the street name so for example 157 peach tree street you would have the town you would have the city and you would have the postal code so Reese is asking so if we were at school we wouldn't need to put the dates at the top first only at the end yes so with then with the formal letter to the press you put the date at the bottom underneath your address. Only the letter to the press. Yes. Okay. Let's look at your address. How would you write your address? I know, Zilne, it's very, very new. Letter to the press is very new. Okay. It's one of the new letters you will learn in grade 10. Okay, let's look at your address. Remember, this address goes at the bottom of your letter, at the very end of your letter. And it starts with your house number and street name, town, city, postal code and date. Okay, Vicky is saying she is lost. Vicky, I will go back just for you. Okay, let's go back to our structure. Our original structure. Okay, Vicky. This specific structure is the structure of a formal letter to the press. Remember, when you write a formal letter, we usually have two addresses at the top. With a formal letter to the press, we have the address to the press at the top and your address at the very bottom of your letter. It's very different. It's new. It's one of the new learners, new letters you learn in grade 10. Lionheart is a bit confused as well. All right, I'm going to explain this one more time. A formal letter to the press is not like a normal formal letter. With a formal letter to the press, we have two addresses. One address at the very top of your letter, which is the address of the person you are sending the letter to. Then you would have an address at the bottom, which is your address. Very confusing, I know. But you just need to understand that a formal letter to the press is not like a normal formal letter. Okay. Right. Let me explain to you guys the address at the top again. So you have two addresses. You have the address at the top, which is the recipient's address, the person you are sending the letter to. Then you have an address at the bottom, which is your address, followed by the date. Um, if your address was at the top of the letter, was the letter going to be sent to you? Um, yes. So you have the address at the top um, so that they know exactly where to send the letter to. And if the letter is undelivered, they can always send it back to the letter at the bottom. Yes, Vicky, I'm saying this type of letter has two addresses, one address at the top, one address at the very bottom. Because it's a formal letter. Remember, formal letters have two addresses. And a formal letter to the press has one address at the top, and one address at the bottom, followed by the date. Can I move on now? Okay, thank you, I'll move on. Right, so we have the two addresses, like I said, the recipient's address at the top, and the recipient's address has the following order the person you are writing to. In this instance, we are writing to the editor. The name of the publication, which is 
daily sun. The building number and the street name, which are 157 Peach Tree Street. The town is Dawn Park, the city Johannesburg, and the postal code 1599. Then with your address, the one at the bottom, you would first start with your house number and street name, your town, city, postal code, and the date. Those are your addresses. Right, so let's move on to the other parts of the formal letter to the press. We have a formal salutation, right? The formal salutation, a salutation is a greeting. When you salute someone, you greet them. So our salutation would be dear sir or madam, right? And we use dear sir or madam if we don't know who we are writing to. If you know exactly who you are writing to, you would use dear Miss Langa, etc. Okay, Zilne is asking, so if you live in a town, you don't include a city or you do include a city or not? You do include your city and your town or you could leave it out completely up to you. Right. After your formal salutation, there it is there, your dear sir or madam, you would move on to the subject of your letter. So after the address to the editor, you skip a line, then you have your salutation. You skip a line, then you have the subject. And the subject is a title or subject line um, that gives you a summary of what the letter is about. And with our example on the left-hand side, we have an example subject which says, letter about untruthful article in Daily Sun newspaper. That is our subject. Then we have our internal structure. So our introduction, body, and conclusion. Okay, so all letters should have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Your introduction would be your paragraph one. Your body would be your paragraph two. And conclusion would be paragraph three. Your, um, you have to say madam, Nelly, because remember, ma'am is a contraction. And in a formal letter, we don't use contractions. Okay. Let's move on to the closing of our letter. Okay. So the closing of your letter is where you write down your yours faithfully. So after your conclusion, you skip a line, then you write down yours faithfully, worried teen, you sign, then you give us your initials and surname. Balisa, I will tell you just now how you start your introduction when I teach you how to write your letter. Lionheart was asking about the signature earlier. If you can't sign, it's okay. Um, you can just give us a little squiggle. But if you include everything that I've included in this specific letter, you stand a chance to get more marks. Okay, let's quickly look at our closing and how to lay out your closing. Quickly go back. So with the closing, the closing of the letter has the following, okay? You start with yours faithfully. Then, if you like, you can give yourself a fictitious name, which we call a pseudonym. So if the article that you are responding to worried you, you can call yourself worried teen. So you can give yourself a pseudonym. Then you sign. No, Dero, you don't have to sign. Then you print your name out. OK, 
Okay, that's your closing. Before I move on, I just want to know which learners would like me to go back to the format? One more time, please. <laughs> Um, so if you take, if it's about a takeaway place, Zilne, yes, you would say hungry team. Okay, Balone is okay, but a lot of learn, okay, Lionheart is okay. Carolina's asking for me to go back again. Again, Carolina, I will go back at the end of the lesson. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will, um, Gaslo, I will go back at the end of the lesson. Right, let's quickly move on. So how do you plan for a letter to the press? Let's look at this example question. It says here, write a letter to the editor of Zoom newspaper in which you complain about an untruthful article they have published. So let's say that this is a question you are given in an exam, right? And you're supposed to write a letter to the editor. When you immediately see that you're supposed to write a letter to the editor, you're supposed to know that you're supposed to follow the letter to the editor format. And the letter to the editor has two addresses, okay? One address at the top and one address at the bottom. A letter to the editor has a formal salutation. Letter to the editor has a subject. A letter to the editor has an introduction, body, conclusion, a closing as well. And in this letter, I remember you are complaining about an untruthful article. With this question, they are not telling you what the untruthful article is. So before you write this letter, you're supposed to think of the following what the article is about. So you are writing about an untruthful article. What was that untruthful article about? What was untruthful about that article? What effects did this have on you and your community? Then you would jot down all of these thoughts in a mind map form. Are we all still together? I know today's lesson is very, very tricky, but if you follow me, you will understand and know exactly how to write a letter to the editor. And this will help you all the way up to matric because they ask this letter often in matric. Right. So this is our question. We are writing a letter to the editor of Zoom newspaper in which we complain about an untruthful article they have published right and those are the things we had to think about someone asked me how do you then write your introduction i've given you guys an example here right and we have introduction there so in your introduction you would say this letter refers to the zoom newspaper article about Da, 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 da. The article was written on the 4th of May. I write this letter to voice my concerns over da, 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 da. Then your body would start this way. Readers have found this article offensive because of this and this reason. The article is untruthful because of this and that reason. The effects of the art, the effects the article has on the community are one, two, three, four. And your conclusion would be, I would appreciate a letter of apology. I hope all the above is in order and I hope to receive a favorable response. I know you guys will not be able to grasp all of this information just from this one lesson. So I will make a plan to have all of these slides shared to you so you can go through this again 
in order to understand. Okay. Right. Let's quickly go back because a lot of you guys found it very frustrating today. And I can imagine most of my learners at school find it very frustrating to write a letter to the press. So I just quickly want to go back to the format. That's our format. Okay. The editor, Daily Sun, 157 Peachy Street, Dawn Park, Johannesburg, 1599. That's your recipient's address. Then you skip a line and you write down your salutation. Dear sir or madam. Then you skip a line and you write down your subject. Your subject is always underlined. Then you skip a line, you have your body, your, your introduction, skip a line, body, Skip a line, conclusion, then you skip a line and you begin with your closing. And your closing starts with yours faithfully and you give yourself a pseudonym, you sign and you write out your name. Then you skip a line and you write down your address. Okay, learners are asking me where they should submit this. I will tell you in a second where to submit this. I would advise all of you to take a screenshot of this format so that you are able to do the task that I will give you in a few seconds. Okay. Lionheart, I will tell you just now where you submit this and when. Um, Balesa, I will let you know how many words the letter must have. Right. I will make sure that I share this presentation with you guys so you can just remind yourself of all the things we spoke about. I would also advise you to take a screenshot of how to plan for a letter so that when you write one, you know exactly what goes where. Right. Let's move on to the question for today. Task time. Right, so here's your question once again. You must write a letter to the editor of Zoom newspaper in which you complain about the untruthful article they have published. Your letter should be between 180 to 200 words. Your letter should be between 180 to 200 words. And you must make sure that you plan it out properly using the table that I showed you guys here. So you would write down your table with the three different rows, right? Label them appropriately and put in the necessary information in each row. And your letter should be between 180 to 200 words. Before I leave, you can email all of your letters to me at langa.pearl at gmail.com. I would advise you guys to try this letter out and to send it to me so that I can help you out with it if I see that you have issues with it. I noticed today that all or most learners had an issue with the letter. So if you email me your letter, I will be able to redirect your thinking into tomorrow's lesson. So please make sure that you email all of your letters to me. Yes, Vicky, you're calling me out. Here's my address, I'll send it just now. Please guys, I urge you to send me emails. Send me emails. Please, please, please. So that I can direct you if you come across any problems. Thank you so much to all the learners who came today. Thank you, Mali. Thank you, Lionheart. Um, join me again tomorrow. But um, remember before you join me again tomorrow, 
that's a letter to the press, um, is formal. The tone is important. The content is important. The language is important. Don't forget the various issues to avoid. Don't forget your structure. And email me, guys. Please email me. And tune in again tomorrow. We will be looking at language structures and conventions, specifically at conjunctions. For our links, daily links for the lesson, you can go visit us at www.africateengeeks.co.za. You can email me personally at langa.com pearl at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at African Teen Geeks um, or at Pearlings, or you can get me on Facebook at Pearl Pearling Langa. Carolina's asking, is there a time period when we should send the letter? You can send the letter to me between today and tomorrow at 12 o'clock midday. So between today and tomorrow midday, you can send me a letter and I'll give you a shout out. And if I see we have any other issues we need to work through, Carolina, we will work through them. Thank you so much, guys. Kamukhalo, yes, you do have homework. It is the letter to the press. Please, guys, work on this specific task. This is a very difficult task that we did today. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in. Please make sure to check out more lessons on STEM Lockdown Digital School. Thank you, Lissetti. Bye.